One of the most ancient places in Florida that still exists today is called Ocala. We find it on the oldest available maps of Florida. This is a 1638 map by Ferdinand de Soto. Close up, here called Ocali. This is a 1591 drawing by Theodore de Bry. Ocala is called El Acale on this map. You find it below the large forest and C-shaped lake. The name was not given by the Spanish, it was so named by the native Red Indians that weren't red at all. Ocala still exists today as a small city. It is known to speleologists for its caverns, grottoes and tunnels, which have always been rumored to harbor artifacts built by an unknown civilization. This caving website tells of some of its history, but says they don't know who built the stairs inside this grotto or the pyramid above it. The pyramid is from another caver's website and merely has the caption, The Cement Pyramid of Ocala Caverns, Florida. The pyramid is not impressive. What's impressive is that its purpose and its builders are unknown. This is a 1961 photo of a statue found inside Ocala Caverns. It's carved from local Coquina limestone, discovered by the first European settlers inside the cave. The very eroded statue is assigned to Timucuan natives, who ruled the area before Europeans arrived. Researchers compared it to similar-looking idols used in ancient Polynesia, including the small drum-shaped altar with base, as well as a ritual object shaped like half a lemon, not shown in this image. The Timucu were mentioned by traveler Ponce de Leon in 1513. They were said to have been heavily tattooed, mostly unclothed, and having arrived at the degenerate state of practicing human sacrifice and cannibalism. The Timucu were decimated by an infectious disease imported by the European settlers. Perhaps an ancient instance of chemical warfare. The ancient scriptures and mythology say that the idol-worshipping human-sacrificing people who once covered the entire earth were eradicated by a great flood. Many Native Americans got killed through mysterious infectious diseases that just happened to arrive as more Europeans came. Is this part of our history being covered up because it's the biggest act of genocide in world history? And, is this crime a lesser evil than letting equally genocidal cannibals and human sacrificers roam the land? A lot of fodder here for politically incorrect conversations. Here's another thought. Is the report that these were idol-worshipping cannibals just propaganda to justify murdering them? I've thought about this. What if they were the peaceful, spiritually attuned people that Native Americans are portrayed as in movies and the New Age section of the bookstore? And what if the European invaders were the real villains, arriving and slaughtering these people by the millions? These loving spiritual nature-oriented people, or bloodthirsty human sacrifices? An in-depth view of ancient scripture, reports and paintings, really answers these questions. Not all the new settlers were good, and not all the natives were bad. Among natives, there were non-cannibal tribes warring with cannibal tribes. There are Native Americans that allied themselves with the European settlers and those who didn't. And then there were natives who did not align with the settlers, but still lived peacefully and without the human sacrifice religion. Some were much more spiritually attuned than the Europeans, some much less. The general chronology of events, as far as I can tell, see also my last videos to understand how I arrived at all this. There was a worldwide high-tech civilization that built all the grand buildings you see. They spoke ancient German. Through successive floods and disasters, this civilization got destroyed. One of the disasters happened around 1250, another one in the 1500s, and another in the 1700s. Survivors of the old world, including giants and dwarves, got hunted down and eradicated. It is unclear if they got wiped out because they had descended into barbarism, or whether the cataclysms caused their barbaric state. Maybe both. I suspect that the European travelers to the New World already knew what they would find and went there with the intention of religiously converting or getting rid of whoever didn't perish in the flood. Let's see what the mainstream says about Ocala via Wikipedia. Ocala is located near what is thought to have been the site of Akela or Akali, a major Tumukua village and chiefdom recorded in the 16th century. The modern city takes its name from the historical village, the name of which is believed to mean Big Hammock in the Tumukua language. The Spaniard Hernando de Soto's expedition recorded Akela in 1539 during his exploration through what is today the southeastern United States. Akale is not mentioned in later Spanish accounts, it appears to have been abandoned in the wake of de Soto's attack. Here we see that De Soto arrived in Florida and wasted no time in attacking Akala. Once it was eradicated, the Spanish didn't even include it in their maps. 
In the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Creek people and other Native Americans, and free and fugitive African Americans, sought refuge in Florida. The Seminole people formed. After foreign colonial rule shifted between Spain and Great Britain and back again, in 1821 the United States acquired the territory of Florida. After warfare to the north, in 1827 the U.S. Army built Fort King near the present site of Ocala, as a buffer between the Seminole, who had long occupied the area, and white settlers moving into the region. The fort was an important base during the Second Seminole War, and later served in 1844 as the first courthouse for Marion County. The Seminole people, which was the name for the team Yukua after most of them got killed, is also ancient German. It consists of semen and al, which means semen and blood. Historians say that Seminole means maroon. Perhaps no coincidence as that is precisely the color of blood. This is a photo of Seminoles, 1850. The modern city of Ocala, which was established in 1849, developed around the fort site. Greater Ocala is known as the Kingdom of the Sun. Plantations and other agricultural development dependent on slave labor were prevalent in the region. Ocala was an important center of citrus production until the Great Freeze of 1894 to 1895. During the Reconstruction era, Ocala was represented by several African Americans in the Florida House of Representatives and on the local level. If you've followed along with my fake history videos, you won't be surprised that modern Ocala was established in 1849. That's around the same time many other cities suddenly appeared. The Ocala Courthouse claimed to have been built in 1906. It is said that two other courthouses at the same spot preceded it. An exposition building in Ocala 1889. The Florida History website says this about this building. The Ocala House Hotel was purchased and refurbished by railroad tycoon Henry Plant in 1895. He bought the hotel at an auction and fixed it up. I'm not told who he bought it from, or when it was originally built. Notice the unfinished road but finished buildings. More buildings but no roads. Ocala National Forest is known as one of those places you take a walk and stumble upon ancient artifacts of obscure origin. People come across brick walls, stone circles, concrete platforms, broken structures, mounds, and strange wells and shafts such as this. When I search timeline of Ocala I am told that its history started in 1817 or in 1846. That's why I call official history fake history. If Ocala history only started in 1817, why is it already on maps of the 1500s? The same can be said of Cape Canaveral, which historical websites say was established in the 1800s, but we also find on very ancient 1500s maps of Florida. Canaveral is a Spanish word that refers to a field of reeds. According to Native American legends, the field of reeds is the first place you arrive to in the afterlife. The ancient Egyptians had a similar teaching. Canaveral thus being linguistically associated with entering heaven, it's a strange coincidence that NASA and SpaceX chose it to launch rockets to the heavens. It surprises me that a courthouse was already established in Ocala in 1846, in the middle of the Seminole War. There's a nationwide pattern of courthouses established in the 1840s. An example is this one not far away, in Tallahassee. We're supposed to believe that, while they were waging civil war, the people who had nothing more than horse carriages, erected grand court buildings all across the country. It's unfortunate that, once again, there are no construction photos. When I looked up Ocala 1880s, I kept getting this photo. You get a look of how cowboys with nothing more than horse carriages actually constructed buildings. But when I found this 1892 map of Ocala and did a close-up, I got this. Those are two very different ideas of what was going on in Ocala those days. I keep remembering how none of these grand buildings were shown in the cowboy movies of my childhood. The movies all looked like the first image. From all research done so far, it's clear that someone preferred not to show America as covered in grand buildings. The western movies that came out between the 1920s up to present day, omit this stuff. Anyone who spends some time researching Ocala could probably dig up so much more, but I'll move on now because Florida is so much bigger. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. 
Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.